In nearly every level of Little Big Planet, the scoreboard is located to the right of the entrance, meaning there's a lot less time spent moving left than right. So in today's challenge, let's try and complete as many levels as we can without pushing left on the analog stick to truly see if we even need it. This means that we have absolutely no way of walking left at all, be it on the ground or in the air, so it'll be up to our creativity with Sackboy's movement to complete the challenge. Let's get it started with introduction. This level is as basic as they come, and we can get all the way to the end by only holding right. First steps is very similar, where we just need to be strategic with our layer changing to avoid any left movement. We can even place all of the stickers while only moving them down and right. We do menu left to open the stickers, but since we do this with the d-pad, it's completely fine. The same applies when menuing between levels, even though the game actually automatically selects the next level for us when unlocking it, so this isn't an issue. On to get a grip. After being careful to not fail any jumps, we can once again change layer to get onto the triangle without moving back left. We could use the horse as normal here, but doing this jump is just as easy. And while I am moving left slightly from the wall here, this is still fine since it isn't using the analog stick. This part has a decent amount of back and forth running to complete, but by doing a right corner jump, we can use the horse to make it the rest of the way, where we can then jump the wall at the bottom of the hill. There's more back and forth movement in the castle, but thankfully we can avoid it as well, by getting on top of the sponges, skipping it entirely. From here we decoration the horse, and go right down to the scoreboard. The start of Skate to Victory can be slightly challenging, but grabbing the floor lets us stop ourselves if we need to. Then the next section isn't an issue, until reaching the jetpack. It might be possible to complete this section by perfectly planning out your movement, but we can actually just grab this sponge through the cardboard, and make it into the castle that way. By using the boot, we can avoid moving the block to get onto the platforms. Then in the next room, a simple left corner jump gets us to this button. And this is where we start to have issues. After pressing this button, we're forced to move back to the left to reach the next boot. We can get a bit of left movement by jumping against the wall then bunny hopping, but it isn't enough. So let's introduce the main way we're going to be moving ourselves to the left throughout this challenge. After spawning a second player, who also can't move left, by grabbing the right side of them and continuously jumping, we actually very slowly move to the left. This will be extremely useful for us, but it does have its limitations. It's almost impossible to climb up any slopes like this, and it's incredibly slow compared to walking. But it does let us reach this boot, so the challenge isn't over yet. Once we get onto it by doing a leapfrog off the other player, we can keep heading right, up to the next boot, where it can launch us far enough left to make it past this obstacle. After this we simply get onto the skateboard, ride it down to the scoreboard, and get stuck again since it's to the left of the top of this hill. The strategy from earlier, which I'm going to start calling player hopping, isn't really useful here because this slope stops us from getting anywhere close to the scoreboard. But what we still have is the leapfrog jump. By positioning our two players properly, it's possible to get a leapfrog with enough speed that lets us carry ourselves all the way to the scoreboard by preserving our speed with bunny hops, activating its checkpoint, then letting the other player die, completing all of the gardens without moving the analog stick left. The start of swinging safari isn't a problem, I just thought it was cool that I got a subclip, despite not using the setup, since it uses left movement. The first draft can be a little difficult, but by jumping at the right time we can make it. Most of the level now is just moving to the right, except at these drafts where there's a bit of left movement, but it's fine. From here we really can just run to the scoreboard no problem, doing a race gate skip for good measure. The start of burning for us has a decent left moving section, but thankfully we can let the buffalo do all the work for us. After the crocodile section, it can be kind of annoying dropping down here, but it's pretty straightforward, letting us finish the whole level easily. The Meerkat Kingdom is one of the few story levels which primarily has us moving left throughout its entire route, making this a pretty big problem. Even if we got over this slope using player hopping, there's an even steeper one after, and that's not even considering the rest of the level. Like some other challenges though, we're obviously going to be doing this level skip to get around all of this. If we just so happen to accidentally have our second player despawn as they're appearing from the entrance, it removes the collision of the wood to the left of the checkpoint. Now if we spawn him again and player hop to a certain point, we can fall through this non-existent collision, and what do you know, we're directly to the left of the scoreboard, letting us run to the right and finish the savannah. The wedding reception is pretty much just running to the right for a whole minute. Normally we would run into issues with these scale elevators, but we can actually use the previous one to get a bounce that skips nearly all of them. Then the rest is pretty straightforward, and we can get bounced to the final skull pretty easily. The darkness is one of the longer levels, but thankfully we have the dog, which can move us in either direction pretty easily. Once we get to the ramp we can pull it down, then move back using the dog. 
There's more scale elevators up ahead, but thankfully we can skip these ones too. Once we lead the dog into the gas, we have to fall in as well so we can get back to the left side again. From here we grab onto the collector's ship and ride it up past the elevators. The next part is fine until we have to pull out this sponge. It looks like we would have to do this hard jump to clear the gap, but you can actually pull it out all the way just by jumping while grabbing it. Then we have our first instance of holding to retry to backtrack, which is actually a really useful tool to have for this challenge. You could probably do that part without popping, but I got stuck so I had to use it. Once we get to Don Lu, we have to pull him to the right as we go past the first time, otherwise there'll be no easy way to get back over to him. We swing across the pit and pop ourselves again after pulling the lever, then we can drag Don Lu from where we left him. When pressing the button to launch him up, we kinda just have to hope that he lands far enough for us to grab him, but it isn't a problem. But right afterwards we run into more scale elevators, though with these ones, there's actually a back layer with a slope that we can use to make it far enough left to keep going. The last obstacle is this ramp that the Skulldozer leaves out for us, which from what I can tell, there's no way that we can get up with another player. Before we go over there though, we can time a jump off this crack in the ground to get onto the butler. Then once his arm stops freaking out, we can jump and grab onto the second bridge to then swing across all the way to the end by holding right and neutral, finishing the darkness. I might have been lying when I said that introduction is as basic as they come, because pretty much the only point of Skulldozer is to run away from the Skulldozer, to the right, with occasional jumps. So this one obviously isn't a problem, letting the first three worlds be completed without pushing left. Boomtown is pretty easy until reaching the three blocks, where it's a good idea to death abuse after they fall over to get on top of them. The next section has a long slope that we would need to walk left up, but before the first hill, we can actually get onto the side of the mountain and climb all the way up while only pressing right. Then the town section isn't too bad either. After the rocket car we find this bomb that we're supposed to roll back to the left, which might be possible to get part of the way there, until this slope. But because there's a skip here, we can just do that instead. The goal is to make it on top of the collector by swinging the scorpion, which actually isn't too hard without pushing left. Once we're standing next to the scorpion, we can have another player activate the collector, letting us swing on top of them from where we're standing. We just have to make sure we don't walk too far and fall off. After this though, we can walk directly to the scoreboard. The mines. We can make it through the start past the first minecart, where we can then actually skip the next one if we want to. But at the top of the elevator, we have another interesting challenge. It'd be extremely difficult making it all the way to the left to hit the cannon because of the slopes. So instead we'll be skipping it with a left corner jump. If we stand in the right spot on this platform, we can drop forward a layer, then get a jump high enough to reach the platform above, where we then immediately run into another problem. Normally we'd pull the sponge left to release the bomb, but it turns out it's just as easy to push the cardboard out by running to the right on top of it with our legs. We then ride another minecart to make it to another elevator, which sadly forces us to switch between several of them. It's funny how so many elevators in this game have that feature. We can actually reach the one on the left by doing a strategic jump from a certain point on the first elevator, letting us then reach the last one. Unfortunately the same trick doesn't work here though, ultimately giving us our first level that just isn't possible to do without pushing left, no matter what we throw at it. Even if we could get to the checkpoint here, there's going to be several more paths that are going to stop us, since pretty much half this level involves moving to the left. We can make it pretty far in Serpent Shrine, since all of the start is pretty much just right movement, until reaching these bouncy platforms, where we can just use the roof to get to the last one. Like in the previous level, after we run across the top of this part, we're expected to traverse through a decently large section of left movement. Thankfully though, this time we can easily just abuse the level's design and drop down to make it straight to the right when the serpents aren't in the way. After this, we can get through the next serpent's tunnel and into the boss fight without issues. Doing the boss fight normally or doing the skip for it are both quite easy to do without pushing left, where we can just death abuse when doing it normally to get enough bombs, completing two thirds of the canyons while only moving right. Unlike most levels, the start of Lowrider is pretty annoying. Not so much challenging, just annoying. After getting in the car, we have to pull the lever to the left, which is barely possible by jumping around while grabbing it, and hoping that Sackboy lands in the right spot. The annoying part is, that since we're still not holding left, he gets launched forward super easily, causing him to drive backwards. Once we make it all the way up though, we can make it to the next car to do a strategic jump straight to the top of this part. Driving the next car is also kind of annoying, but it isn't as bad as the last one since the ground is pretty flat and the car drives slowly. But when we get out of the car, we're meant to walk left to lower the bridge, which we could reach by player hopping, but I doubt there's any way to get enough force to push the bridge down. 
Instead, while we're still in the car, if we position it in the perfect spot, which we can do by reversing using the right stick after hitting the wall, it's just possible to bounce high enough to pull the lever, opening the door so that we can progress. The only problem is that we don't have the car anymore, and we would normally need it to reach the next part. The simple workaround for this though, is that we can pull off a double left corner jump instead to reach the top. But then soon after is this little snaking section where we need to move left. But thankfully the glass on the car helps us use our falling speed to bunny hop to the left and over the electricity. Now we can just make it to the final car and drive it all the way to the end using the tedious lever pulling method from before to reach the scoreboard. Or we can just carpool with Z dude. Once we take the lone elevator and subway, we almost don't even need to push right on the analog stick, since we can just take the public transport over to the first lever. Then after easily pulling it to the right, we have another big left moving section, where luckily another train comes to pick us up, where the only real effort we need to put in is to bunny hop past the checkpoint to stay on. Then we hop on another one to go to the right until making it down to Mag's car. For this part, we just have to make sure we move the lever left enough so it can pick up the car with the button first try. We could death abuse if we needed to adjust the lever though. But after this we ride another elevator to finish off subway. In the construction site we can make it all the way past these three platforms until this seesaw on the far right, where we quickly get stuck with another left moving section. Hope isn't lost for this one though. If we go back to an earlier part, a left corner jump can land us on this small piece of metal to reach the sponges, where we can then get over to the left by holding right and neutral to swing, like in the darkness. Then if we get another player up here by doing the same thing, we can play a hop far enough to be able to move this platform, getting us on top of it so we can grab the next sponge and move upwards. If we use a third player to get another sackboy up here, we could just keep player hopping. But the swinging of the sponge is actually enough to get us some bunny hops to barely activate the next checkpoint. After this, we can get a player past the gas by using some more player hopping. But this is where it looks like we'll be stopping. We might be able to climb up this slope with two players, but the fireballs are what ruin it since we can't get past the metal beam quick enough to avoid burning. Again, even if we could get past here, it's unlikely that we could even make it past the later obstacles. The only other thing that the level has going for it is the major skip that it has, where if we instead swing to the right after landing on the metal, we would normally be able to jump from the enemy's hammer, then do a left corner jump to land us on a ramp that takes us into the boss arena. To land on this ramp though, we need to lose all of our horizontal speed after the left corner jump, which isn't possible without moving the stick left. It'd be great if it was though, because the boss fight actually seems doable, but for now we'll have to leave the construction site. Endurance Surger was the level that's most heavily reliant on moving left, with the entire route having us moving in that direction. We can get down the first steps on our own, and then play a hop to halfway across the bridge, where it's too steep to keep going. But from here we can do a leapfrog jump with some bunny hops to reach the checkpoint. On the next bridge, we can actually use the lanterns to bunny hop all the way across to the next set, where the same thing is done to grab this last one. From here I haven't been able to get any further. The next platform is just out of reach, though it might be barely possible. What's the point though? There's no way this entire level is possible like this, with the ninja poles and other difficult platforms in our way. Just for fun though, for this one level, let's reverse the rules and instead ban moving the stick right, and allow us to move left. Like this, we can get much further, with the level not being much of a challenge at all. We pretty much just need to go straight to the top at these rotating beams. And other than that, the red wheels let us move right when we need to, the ninja poles are easy, and the lever for the elevator can be pulled right by spamming jump on it, making for what I'm calling a half victory for this level. Time for the infamous Sensei's Lost Castle. It shouldn't be too brutal this time though, since this level is based mostly around vertical and right movement. The catapult doesn't need to be moved, so we can make it all the way to the first red wheels easily, using the green wheel to land next to the first one. From here we skip to the third wheel, since we'd have to move back to the left if we went to the second one. Then since the fourth wheel is spinning anti-clockwise, it lets us move left and grab the fifth easily, to then get a slope drop off that one, finishing the room entirely. Now we can pretty much walk straight into the next red wheel section, where again we can make a lot of progress without moving left at all, and when we do need to, we can easily use the slopes on the wheels to do so. For the zipline section, we need to set up a nice swing to the left on the second drop, so we can keep enough speed to reach the last drop while holding neutral on the analog stick. The next set of green wheels are again easy because, well, circles, where we can then start the boss fights. There's plenty of ways to complete the first fight considering that you can death abuse, 
but it's just as easy to get launched back to the left as it starts like this. The same pretty much applies for the main fight. It's possible to do without death abusing if you time layer changes to get flung around. The ninja section does have you moving left slightly, but because of how they jump around when you grab them, it's pretty easy getting through it all. Now we grab the last zip line, let go before it slows down to embrace right moments of superiority, and finish the level without any left stick movement. Terribaloni's volcano is going to be an interesting one, with its fortresses that snake down, flying the balloon, and the zigzagging path throughout the volcano. Once we start flying up with the ship, we can then move to the right pretty easily. It's a bit difficult getting back to the up control without death abusing, but because of how the balloon swings around, it's not too bad. This pretty much lets all three of the balloon flying sections be completed just fine. The challenge starts once we reach the fortresses. Once we land here we need to start player hopping to get inside, and we actually need to get off the balloon to do it because of the tiny slope where the checkpoint is. Once inside though we can move down to where the first set of spikes are, player hopping to get as close as we can. From here it's just barely possible to leapfrog ourselves past, just in time to not be killed by the next cycle. Now we can run to the right, pull down the lever and death abuse to return back to the ship. Again the flying section is easy to complete, and entering the fortress is the same as the previous. The spikes are a bit different though. Also the jumping sound effect just broke so that's why you don't hear it. After we leapfrog past like before, there's a pretty big gap before the next drop, so it seems like we'll need some pretty good bunny hops to make it. But as it turns out, for whatever reason the spikes on the left actually pull us towards them ever so slightly when they shoot out, letting us fall down to the next part no problem. Now we can make it to the lever and death abuse again to get back to the balloon, where after painfully flying it one more time, we can start the last part of the level, the volcano. The start of it has us moving right until getting to this spinning wheel, where instead of running all the way and getting stuck, we can fire boost to get straight up to the middle platform. I'll be honest, it seemed a little hopeless after this, but amazingly, after getting another player up here, we can leapfrog and then fire boost again to clear this entire gap, where thankfully landing on fire allows you to conserve all of your speed. Then this part also seemed kind of hopeless because of how steep this hill is, as well as the size of the fire in the ground. But to my surprise, by doing a right corner jump, we can land a bit later in the level in a dangerous spot where the oncoming fire can actually boost us back to the left and into safety, where we can now start moving right again, where all that's left is the boss fight. After making it up here, it's not too hard to get two players onto the ledge to potentially start player hopping all the way to the lever. I just did it in the wrong order when recording. The problem is that there's not nearly enough time to get over there before we get blasted with fireballs. I mean, it might be possible to just dodge them all and use one to get boosted to the lever, but there's no way I'm going to be doing that. So instead, we're actually going to be introducing another sack boy for the first strategy that we'll use three players to complete. The way emitters work in this game is that they won't actually spawn anything if there's an object in the way where it emits from. Meaning, we can throw our third player into the jaws of the Oni, where he'll block the emitter from throwing any fireballs at all, with the teeth being grabbable, letting him stay perfectly in that position. Now we can get our two players back onto the ledge, player hop until the slope in the ground, then do a leapfrog jump all the way to the lever, where the cat defeats the boss, allowing us to complete the entire level without moving the stick left once. I honestly can't believe this level was possible with how many difficult obstacles there were. It definitely took a while to get through, but there are still 7 more levels left, so let's start the temples. The Dancer's Court is another level that does a few loops around, making us go left and right, but we should still be able to get pretty far with the first section since it's just right movement. The very start presents a bit of a challenge with these stairs that we can't really pull out, but because we can move into the back layer, there's no problem doing a left corner jump to make it up. Most of the level now is just using various platforms to move to the right. The part with the dancer can be difficult if you walk too far, but it's fine. Then we can really just keep moving right until around the halfway point of the level, where there's quite a bit of left movement with even some platforming. We'll get a second player over here so we can leapfrog them both up onto the first block. Then after we player hop to the edge, we can do another well-timed leapfrog to barely fire boost over to the next platform. Well now we're pretty much stuck, so let's do the exact same thing we just did, but with the third player so we can have two people on the last block. Once we're in this position now, we can do one last leapfrog to just make it to the checkpoint. We can make it onto the snake pretty easily from here, where it moves us back to the left by jumping off of it. Now the level switches back to moving to the right, and we can get pretty far, that is until the auto scroller section, where there's this tiny bit of platforming that we're not going to have any hope of getting around because of how big the jump is. If we go back to where the snake is though, we'll have a chance of doing another skip. Once we're on this lower platform, 
All we need to do is time a jump off of its head to land on this structure above. Now if we just take this route to the right, which involves a right corner jump, we can fall off the edge and land directly at the scoreboard, all while only pushing right. Shortly after the start of Elephant Temple, we're given the same type of stairs as in the previous level, except there's no front or back layer that we can use to skip it. Grabbing and jumping does nothing to pull them out either. We can get the first step out a bit by running on it, but it's not enough. It does let the second step be barely jumped off of, but there's no way we'll make that. If you did make it past though, you just run into another set of stairs that are arguably even worse. Then later in the level there's also this small section that doesn't look great either. So sadly, Elephant Temple is definitely not possible for us. The Great Magician's Palace thankfully doesn't have any more stairs like before, and we can get pretty far, since until the button, we're just running across appearing blocks. We can get past the section with the button, it's just that right afterwards, we have a decent strip of left movement that no player hopping could get us through because of how the ground disappears. But if we go back to the button and spawn enough blocks to get into the back layer, we can reach this star, where after jumping on it for a while, we can get launched over this wall completely, and we'll have avoided the left moving section, making star skip officially useful for the first time. Anyway, from here we can keep moving right through the rest of the level, dying here to avoid the falling blocks. The next hurdle are these draggable blocks, which look very similar to the ones in the darkness. Thankfully they also behave similarly, where if we jump while grabbing, we can move them far enough left, where we can halt or retry to make it back onto the previous ledge, to then jump across both blocks while only moving the first one halfway. After this it's a straight run to the scoreboard, where we finally get transported into the wilderness, completing the level and starting the final world. The beginning of the frozen tundra nicely gives us a right moving vehicle to fly past everything with, where after walking past some icicles, we actually quickly get stopped since there isn't any way for us to get on top of these platforms because of how tall they are. Slightly earlier though, is this area's checkpoint, where if we use a deload on it, with another player activating the checkpoint, we're given the option of moving inside of this wall. Inside the wall is a gap in the floor that we can fall through left of the checkpoint, which is why someone else had to activate it. There's nothing to the right after this, but if we try to land here while falling, we can get a ton of speed moving left, where if we bunny hop for long enough, it's quite easy to find the ice slide that's normally way later in the level. Then by landing on it, we're effortlessly taken all the way down to the final area, where we can clear the path of enemies, then death abuse to take the soldier through the door, completing the level. Nearly all of the bunker is actually pretty easy for us to get through. There's just a few parts we need to be careful of, like at the rotor tubes and inside the spinning wheels. The electric pillars on the conveyor belt being the most troublesome, since we can't really move away from them if we need to. But it's not a big deal if we just time our movement. And while it does become a bit more challenging, we almost don't even need to move the analog stick at all while we're inside the wheel, since it's already moving around us completing all of the bunker quite easily. The start of the collector's lair quickly stops that though, with one of the hardest starts to a level yet. During the drop down while holding the sponge, there's normally a bit of moving around in both directions. But the best we can do is moving right when we need to with the stick, and relying on the natural movement back to its resting position that the sponge does to move to the left. But surprisingly, by taking the perfect route through the electricity, it's just barely possible to get through without dying, the final drop being the tightest part. Once we're down here we can jump off this slope to activate the checkpoint, so we can begin doing some player hopping, where the platform that the checkpoint is above can get us to the lever. Now we just leapfrog both players up here, hop over to the key, drag it over us and push it out. We can avoid a death abuse by jumping into a small gap in the door as we insert the SD card. But anyway, now we can start the main part of the level. Once we reach where we need to go back upwards and slightly left, a lucky edge jump can get us all the way up there. For the next part like this, we get a lucky swing from the sponge to barely reach the platform. Now we can finally just run to the right for a while, without anything else getting in the way. It's only until we reach the magician there's a decently large left section, but because the entire ground is moving, we don't really have to do much. It's not too hard getting through all of this part by jumping at the right time, and bunny hopping at the end of it to drop down into another right moving area. We do move back left slightly during this section, but again it's not a problem because of the moving ground where we can then meet up with the genie. There is actually a skip that brings us here from where the magician was that we could have easily have done, but the intended route was much more interesting since it was actually possible while still needing to move left through it all. There's no moving platforms below the genie though, so we'll have to do some player hopping over to another falling sponge section, except this one doesn't have nearly as many obstacles as the first. Once at the bottom we can ride over the electricity and finish yet another level without moving the stick left. But now onto the final one. 
This level doesn't actually have us moving through a long route or anything, as the boss fight itself only takes place within one large arena. And since there's only one checkpoint within the fight, we're going to be needing to be extremely strategic with our death abusers for whenever we need to move back to the left, since there's also not much in the fight that can push us around like we need. We can finish the first phase of the fight with only one death, by getting two of the brains at once, which also respawns us to get the last two of this phase. After we get this one at the start of the second phase, we need to get moved back as it spawns the enemies, so that we're far back enough to kill them in the right spot, and also get the hidden brain in the hand. Now we hit more of the brains on the right, kill the next set of enemies, and eventually use another death abuse to reset our position. After these enemies die, the collector starts to move around freely, so our positioning shouldn't matter too much anymore. You could probably do this part more efficiently than this, but since we still have quite a few lives, we can just death abuse again after hitting this bubble, so we can pop the last one of this phase. The collector's final form is a lot easier than the last, because we can abuse the movement of the brains as they're being revealed, to pop more than we're meant to at one time quickly leaving only 3 brains left. We wouldn't have needed to death abuse here to get the rest, I just accidentally died. Once we get back though, we can easily get the rest by timing jumps as the arms move to reach them all. And with that, we've completely defeated the collector with many deaths, but without any left movement of the analog stick. For all 26 levels that were attempted across the game, only 4 of them weren't possible without moving the analog stick left at all, which were the mines, the construction site, Endurance Dojo, and Elephant Temple, even though we did finish one of those without right movement instead. But this is still super surprising, allowing me to say confidently that you can in fact complete 85% of Little Big Planet story mode without moving left. I hope that you found this just as interesting as I did, because I really wasn't expecting this much to come out of this challenge at all, so I'm definitely glad that I tried it. Thanks for watching. This would probably be something good to try in the other games too, but we'll see what happens. See you later.